<clears throat> All right. We ready? We ready? We're going to watch a trailer chat for the final shape. Uh, and then I think we're going to put it on YouTube too, because why not? Last time we did it, we got put in the trailer for the for the Lightfall trailer. That was pretty cool. Jova rated final shape launch trailer. First time viewing. So this got memed, right? Apple. Uh-oh. Oh, damn. The witness nears the final shape. It might have been a nightmare. It's okay. reshaping reality into a perfect stillness. Oh God. I'm done burying my friends. It's the end of everything. Might as well try to stop it. Oh, it's so One crazy getting to hear his voice again. Together. Oh, he sounds so good too. Into the end. This place. It's hard to describe. The infection. Festering. You said it spoke to you. So the f was that? The witness shows us what it thinks we want. Oh God. It's a lie. Oh God. Don't touch it. Black bearer. Let us lift the weight of suffering. No. Join us. No. Ah. There's Zavala. Please. Too many dementors Don't around. Do this. No! No, crow. Keep moving. Ah! Nobody makes my fate but me. Good lord, this trailer's going so hard. Get him. Nova Bomb, baby. I had a dream. Oh! Anxiety! Oh, stressful! Oh, stressful! Oh! 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 All I know is that that ace ornament's gonna go hard. And you can have my money. <laughs> ace reforged. Oh wait, no, actually this one. This one's gonna be Pedro. This one's gonna be Pedro. <laughs> uh, is that all? Like, comment, subscribe. GG's, no rees. Oh, one more. Kazakh says, well, are we watching the in-game cutscene next? I swear to God, you mean this one. Oh yeah, actually this one. I don't think we've I don't think we've seen this one yet either. I haven't. You gonna catch yourself or what? All right, I say a lot of bad things about Crow, but at least he doesn't run double jump. He's he's a strafe guy. Or a high jump guy. We can respect that, all right? My boy's been in here for like six months. Hawk Moon versus Ace. I mean, he could have reloaded if he had dodged the right way, but whatever. 
What a pose. Yeah, you got offline gets in the YouTube video. Hi, YouTube. Hi, offline. You died. So did you. Whatever. Yeah, I don't have to call you Prince anymore, do I? Firm handshakes, firm handshakes, firm handshakes all around. Cool. If Cade can forgive him, you can't. Hey, we don't even know if that's really Cade, all right? Do we even know if that's really Cade? Oh, we don't know very much. Cool, GG's. That was fun. If there's one thing Bungie's cracked at, it's trailers, man. Trailers, man. GG's. Like, comment, subscribe. Will be. I'm not on Xbox controller. Nah, it's fine. It's almost over, anyways. You died. Yo, wait, 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 wait. He's he, he's aiming down, right? He's aiming down. The ghost shows up. And he's like, the ghost shows up. He's like, oh, nice. Boom. Kills the ghost. Boom. Kills, kills the children. How do you like it? <laughs> so like, comment, subscribe. We're going back in. Go back in. Another video. More. More videos. Click. Hey, and text and take one. That was early. There's a line that emerged in Destiny 1 that wasn't planned for, but it's very deliberate by the person who put it in the game and is very resonant for Destiny players and resonant for me as a person. Become legend. And that line is, Guardians make their own fate. That was wrong. Oh, dude. That still oh, gives me that giving me chills. Goosebumps. For me, that has sort of become a, oh, a touch God. point for the Destiny story. Chat. Again and again, uh, one, bro. external forces come and try to impose a fate upon you and humanity. And again and again, you show them that they can't do that. Chat, I was a teenager. We make our own fate. That's not just a powerful theme of destiny. It's also a powerful theme for us as people. I was like 15. Both developers and as humanity. Oh God, we're going to we get emotional. We make our own fate. We're going to get emotional. I'm scared. Chat, I'm scared. When you're talking about 10 years of story, there's a lot of stuff crammed in there. And there's a lot of things that we could do and could talk about. But as storytellers, the hardest part isn't coming up with the ideas. It's knowing which ones are the important ones. We want to tell a story that makes you, the player, feel like all of that time that you invested, we saw you, and we want to give you the experience that you've been waiting for. We looked at everything we had we laid Other it all out uh, like whiteboards and like <laughs> everything we were trying to look for a theme that felt resonant not just for this story but for destiny as a whole and the theme that we kept coming back to was purpose and fate it's a lot of ghosts and that's what this story is about not just for ourselves as the player but also for our characters i used to think uh. i'd give anything to bring you back I cried quite a few times doing those scripts because I, I treated it with the love of a fan. Every time I opened a script, I was like, what would I want to see? What would I want to hear? You get to see their emotional journey, the struggle of how do we defeat the witness? Let's bring an end to your futile existence. 
assertions. The witness sees itself as the one true God. So it's come to the traveler because it needs the power of the traveler's light to finish this vision. Its goal is salvation. What I want I want more backstory on the, the witness in this campaign. I really hope I would love for there to be a, a twinge of like a twinge of like, oh, I see I see where they're coming from, you know? You know? One more. Why don't you want that? Be reborn. Our mission is to make sure that we can prevent it from getting the light, the thing that it needs, in order to make it all happen. It's finally confronted the Traveler, and here we are, thorns in its side, a blip on its radar, trying to make a difference. You're gonna speak to the Witness, and the Witness is gonna shine a light on some things, oh and boy. you wonder, like, what would it be like? What, what would it be like to be a disciple of the Witness? Yeah, let's go. I want that. Witness. Your guardian's use has yet to be determined. We are in need of a god killer. Let's go. Every time you hear the witness, you're not just hearing one voice. You're We're hearing the whispers in the background. You're hearing all of these other textures. You're still resisting. You can feel a subtext sometimes where the real witness comes through, or at least things that it doesn't want you to know about it come through. There is only suffering! Putting characters into pressure cookers That's is what mad. storytellers do best. And I can't imagine a more intense pressure cooker than it's the end of the world. If we fail, everything is frozen forever, and only we can do it. It's just the handful of us inside of a god. There were a couple of themes that we had when we started on the Bill Hart. The cool. two main ones that I remember were surreal and shared to spire. Seeing how they put a tiny little guardian at the beginning of this vast journey that's spreading out in front of you really put into perspective the scale that we needed to hit in order to make the pale heart look and feel dangerous and ambitious and vast. When we were thinking of surreal things, it was a bit of a challenge because how do you make something surreal? Uh, cool. For me, is putting familiar things out of context. Somebody what needs is to check out that chimney. Turn the it's looking that a little you sus. Are not expecting. So that's when we play with scale. We play with unexpected things. <laughs> that's a giant ghost. There's this awesome piece of concept art that is like this massive ghost in the horizon and you just like go oh over there and God. it's just like broken down in the middle it's your ghost versus the ghost she told you not to worry about and it's just weird in a way that is unsettling but at the same time feels very visceral another one that we used was body parts excuse and me it sounds a bit strange <laughs> not gonna not gonna we're all thinking it I'm not gonna say it. Just know that we're all thinking it. We don't need to say. We don't need to go there. But I know you're thinking it. Moving on. Because we didn't want to do body horror, so I was taking screenshots from the game and just trying to find silhouettes and things that would look surreal. And I start replacing all the trees with hands, <laughs> so all the limbs were made out of fingers coming out and eyes were on the floor. And I do remember our direction was like that, like more hands. Are there hands holding up the freeway in which we were born? Yes. I don't like it. <laughs> you'll recognize it instantly. And then almost as quickly, you'll realize oh you've goodness. never been here before. I definitely feel like there's some aspects of the- It reminds me of the Left for Dead, Left for Dead like logo, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, that was a good representation, right? The pale heart, we're like, this is freaking weird and scary. I want to take that risk. I want to push a little bit of what expectations of a destination can be. And I hope that players love that. As players progress, they get to see more influence of the witness, not just on the traveler, but also on the races that it's interacted with that we've seen so far. Oh yeah, the new boys. The dread are a result of the witness experimenting with the light. 
So while it's inside the Pale Heart, it's able to access the light as it's trying to siphon it. It is using that light to create and alter new and different combatants. And so we've encountered some of these members before. Now we have a name for them. The new Dread units, they're using a new language, collaborating with narrative. We went through and used this constructed language tool to generate different phrases and figure out like grammar structures and, and other things. The pyramid language that the new uh, Dread units speak is actually translatable. So players, if they're really interested in figuring out what the, the pyramid units are saying, could decipher these. Kos yen it get, baktoku vakad. The husks are. <laughs> There's a billion memes running through my head. Uh... <laughs> Anyways, are an interesting addition to Destiny because you've never fought anything like them before. We talked about, oh yeah, they need some big weapons. Like it needs to look like this thing is serious business. They wanted a bit of a secondary unit on it, so like a two-in-one. As the sketches were progressing, we were kind of like, oh, this feels like it's sentient. And we just love the idea. We had all these different sound effects in our library of water bladders that make some really cool sounds when they're shaken. We use some sounds of slapping jello, too. So that was kind of the foundation for the husk. We have all these real physical sounds that come together and feels like an alien moving around in the center of this thing. The collaboration between the different disciplines and the trust we have for each other. At the end, it comes out better than anybody could have made individually. Babe, how was, your, how was work today? It was great. I had squished a bunch of jello into a microphone. It was a good time. Howdy, kid. There's a moment where you realize, looking at the final shape, that it's not just a story about the Guardian's journey. It's also kind of the story of Destiny's journey. It starts in a place of uncertainty and challenge, and then it changes and evolves, and it proceeds forward into the unknown. And as you get closer to the final shape, those two experiences converge. We know where we're going. We know where we're aiming for. I feel very confident about the love and the work and the thoughtfulness that everyone bum, bum, bum. working on this police put into it. And I think it's inevitable that when people start going in and experiencing all these different things that make up this expansion, I think they're going to see it. I won't lose another soldier in this war. <laughs> more video to go chat can we confirm michael salvatore did do the music for final shape he did right i'm pretty sure like the same composers did it because i want to be hit in my feels this 10 year culmination i want it to hit me in the chest and come out of my eyeballs really weird way to phrase that but yeah that's what i want going back in like comment subscribe and Bungie and but this team and Bungie in general is all about collaboration testers designers effects artists animation all these sources of input from everywhere coming together and like that was magic for me boom, boom, boom. the final shape it felt a little like a love letter at times we really thought about bringing that forward to the weapons. Like Kvostov, it's the first gun you get. There has to be the narrative bookends of the first gun I got in the game, it's here in the Pale Heart. It's like this old friend returned. How do you make this thing really good and really powerful without making it not what it is? And that was really challenging. What we ended up deciding on is it is about your skill. Oh, it's all in the wrist, a little like, it's gonna bounce several times down this line of guys. 
You're just really good at bouncing this bullet. It's fate, almost. This thing's dope. Oh, yeah. And we pepper in the number seven in as many places as we could. So it bounces seven times. It's got a bunch of sevens in its stat. You get seven bouncy bullets when you pick up an orb of power. Bungie has a long legacy of loving the number seven, and this felt like the right place for it. Wait, Bungie likes the number seven? Cade has this iconic hand cannon that in a lot of ways has become a symbol. We took Ace of Spades and we went, where's the rest of the deck of cards? We had this really cool opportunity to theme all the Pale Heart weapons after different suits. It has this two-tone feel to it. The opposite side of the gun is the inverse of that idea. They look freaking awesome. It also has like these fantasies of characters that have influenced Cade. These guns are part of his past. We wanted so something that you can't do with any of your other weapons. And we came up with No Hesitation. It shoots these harmonic bullets that That's so if you're cute. targeting an enemy, it'll hurt them and burn them. But if you're shooting an ally, it'll heal them. I love this thing. Oh, I'm so glad. We had to build a lot of the language. And with the new cool little guardian health bars, you can see that. The healing effect on it is very strong. For a while, we were calling it the just don't die gun. It has its own little energy bar like the glaive does. And that energy bar <laughs> is... <laughs> Free Nightfall helps put on this gun. You stay behind me, all right? Just keep shooting. Don't stop, all right? Charged by any damage whatsoever. Like, we know what we did. Since you are returning to the Traveler, we wanted to focus on bringing new supers to the light subclasses. For Song of Flame, we wanted to plus up Radiance from Destiny 1 and have it be combat focused. Bro, if they bring back self res, is, is that game breaking? I feel like we're at the point where the game will be broken with all this stuff being added anyways. So like, why not? Yay or nay? self res yay or nay? If you remember Radiance from D1, I sure do. has fire wings. We kind of ate that visual space with Dawnblade, where you've got these like awesome flame wings. In a split second, if a player sees a character solar with wings, they're going to see that it's Dawnblade. We had to come up with something different. Zach, our VFX artist came up with the idea of this halo around you, like a medieval painting. Twilight Arsenal. Oh yeah, what if it's an exotic that makes you be able to self-res with the new super? Is a one-off super that also creates these axes. Coming up with visuals for that axe, it was an interesting challenge. How do we want to root this in destiny? We took a lot of inspiration from Titan's shield. What would it feel like if the axe was the shield broken up? And when you look at it side by side, <laughs> you can definitely cool. see that connection between the two. Storm's Edge. We wanted to call back to Arcblade in Destiny 1. Throwing the dagger and zipping over there. All right, well, if you wanted to work like D1, have the hit registration be Own up stuff. How long do you have in the super? Initially, you had you had a long time. You had 24 <laughs> seconds. We did not earn any friends in those places. No, the people were pretty mad. But we toned it down, and now you only have 12 seconds, and it's a lot more reasonable. We found a problem where when I you grapple and then you cast Blink Dagger out of it, I fall to the floor, right? Whereas if I'm in midair and I Blink Dagger, I should be held in midair, right? And it sucks, so I want to fix it. It's the things like God, the nightmare. camera shake, the way the rumble spikes and then falls back off. We need all of our abilities to feel awesome. We want to make it so that the controller melts away. You stop thinking about what do I have to do? And instead you just inhabit your character and you don't have to think about it. The game just plays. The great thing about Prismatic was every playtest we did, the feedback got better and better. We have gone back and forth on what starter builds that players will get in mission one. Okay, we're going to start at the Titans with Stringer's Lash, their strand aspect, and Knockout. One of the notes we got is clear. I know the back of that head. I'd recognize the back of that head anywhere. Players just weren't understanding how those two things comboed in a loop. Well, we're going to drop Stringer's Lash, and instead we're going to put in Diamond Lance. Now, any ability kill is making your Diamond Lance. 
your knockout so. punch. Hey, that makes a diamond lance. You throw your diamond lance at the floor, everything's frozen. Now you can punch stuff again and get amplified with knockout. Once we made that switch, all of a sudden it clicked in players' heads. This loop becomes a lot more clear and players were much more satisfied with their starter loadouts. At the end of the day, like the chaos is the point. Yeah. If you aren't surprised and delighted in a way that you didn't expect, like, <laughs> yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, self res is coming back. This strike is probably one of the coolest strikes that we've ever released. I started my Destiny journey playing strikes. I really wanted to push the expectations of what a strike could potentially be. This strike, it's sort of a memory out of the Witness's history of its race oh God. and what its buildings may have looked like in the past. A lot of the inspiration comes from 30s pulp novels, adventure flicks, uncovering ancient hidden cities that have not seen a living soul. You're liking what I'm hearing. Liking what I'm hearing. And then subsequently destroying those cities moments later. Tell me more, tell me more. Imagine you're in a narrow hallway. You need to escape it. Lava is descending. Obstacle is coming out of the walls. You yeah. made this slide towards the closing door and... Yeah. Yeah, I like you it. You're dead. Done. The door just closed right in front of your Joker. face. So. That happens a lot. <laughs> I have seven Gilded Conqueror titles. Go off. I want this strike to be the hardest strike we ever made. Go off. I want people to scream and cry over this strike. Oh, no. <laughs> and just say, how do I complete this strike on Grandmaster difficulty? And I'll be like, yes. What a f <laughs> iron, bro. Good lord, that's they're so chaotic. That's kind of one of the fun about making a strike. I love it. There's so much freedom and creativity to do wild things. Was that a guy up top? There's so much... Was that, a, was that a guy? There's a guy up there? Strike. Who's that? There's so much freedom and creativity to do wild things, and then testing that. It's just a lot of fun, that back and forth. Dun, 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 dun. We have a very tight relationship with Test as designers and I couldn't do anything I do gameplay-wise without Test there at my side. But as soon as I can get fresh eyes on it, I think that's where it really comes in. We ran a lot of play tests, and every time I would invite people, I'm like, this is final, this is final play test, but it's never final. We just can't stop. Until it's the final <laughs> shape. It's really ah! not just one department creating something special. When you see all those things combined and the iteration and the back and forth, and when you get to this end result where it just feels like it couldn't be any other way. We hit on something amazing here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a this fat dub right there, chat. Oh yeah, baby. Four times the charm. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, bye.